Y'all, I have got to tell this. I have to tell my feelings right now. I have to tell what is on my spirit. God is coming back. I'm gonna tell that right now. Jesus is coming back. We're lucky if we have the rest of this year. And I mean that with all my heart. Results from the historic agreement. Peace is a good thing. And this peace unites uh, moderate, two of the most advanced economies in the world, Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and two of the most moderate. We're fighting Iran and the radicals who are trying to overthrow the entire order in the Middle East, subjugate people, propagate terrorism. So this is good for peace, good for security, good for prosperity. Uh, I think it's good for the United States and good for Israel. But not everyone in the region agrees. Iran flat out condemned it. The Palestinian Authority called the UAE traitors. And President Erdogan threatened to break off diplomatic relations with the United Arab Emirates. This is a truly historic moment. And peace. Not since the Israel-Jordan peace treaty was signed more than 25 years ago has so much progress been made towards peace and peace in the Middle East. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Exact suspects that you would expect to hate this deal, hate this deal. Best-selling author and Middle East expert Joel Rosenberg tells CBN News Turkey's reaction to the peace deal is revealing. Rosenberg also believes this Abraham Accord has prophetic undertones. We watch in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38, 39, what's known as the eschatological future war of Gog and Magog, is the Arab states being very calm and quiet towards Israel. Israel reconstructed, peaceful, prosperous, calm, secure, and then a Russian-Iranian-Turkish alliance forming against Israel. The Bible talks about a confederation of nations, including Put, Kush, Persia, Magog, Gomer, and Tubal coming against Israel. Now, I'm not saying the, the war of Gog and Magog is imminent. I'm saying is the trend lines of peace in the Middle East with a Russian-Iranian-Turkish axis, this is exactly where we're heading. This is the trajectory, and it's something that should cause all Christians to watch carefully and to continue to pray. Man, again, it is amazing to just look around the world right now at everything that's occurring. Everything is right in our face. And we just look at the convergence and we, when we connect all the dots, it just shows us that we're on the verge right now of a dispensational change. If you have learned anything out of these last months, I think one of the things is we, we should have learned is that things can change from one day to the other. I mean, we could die any second anyways our whole life, but seeing what's going on in this world right now, here in Washington earlier today. Meanwhile, spiking numbers are being seen across much of the country. Facing those massive fires already among the worst in that country's history with more than 12 million acres scorched. We call it the world's tallest symbol of freedom. So imagine the shock last night when Acuity's American flag was torn. That is by far the um, most damaged I've ever seen one of our flags. The Palestinian Authority called the UAE traitors. Jesus is coming. Just look around you at this world right now. But the church, for the most part, is asleep. It's time to make sure you're ready for the sudden rapture of the church. How are you ready? It's all about Jesus. Again, put it like the Apostle Paul gives you, the gospel of your salvation, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, that you're putting your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, that you're believing and putting your trust in Jesus that he died for you on that cross of Calvary. He died for your sins.
I have got to tell this. I have to tell my feelings right now. I have to tell what is on my spirit. God is coming back. I'm gonna tell that right now. Jesus is coming back. We're lucky if we have the rest of this year. And I mean that with all my heart. So, I think it will happen on Christmas. Mm, I don't no know one, that. no one knows that. Hey, but I now, don't know, but I think I just got a feeling inside of me. Okay, and you're not worried about Jesus coming for the rapture? What? You're not worried about Jesus coming to fetch you? Why? No, well, you're just very excited about it. So, my first actually dream of Jesus, we were both lying in bed, this bed right here, and I saw Jesus like in that corner over there and he was just sitting and he showed me his hand and he showed me how the holes are in his hands. Yeah. Once I did ask Jesus when would the would the when would the rapture be? This is before he told me it was in twenty twenty. Then um then he said it'll be very soon. Guys, wake up! You might be the one that is so naive just like going with the flow and thinking everything's fine, Corona will be over soon, and it's just like, you know, guys, I think it's like an iceberg and we only see the tip of it. We're so blinded, we're blinded more and more and I want to get rid of all that stuff. But then I feel like I have to be bold in just speaking what I feel so intensely. And God said in the last days, like, there will be kids and guys and whatever, this verse where they will have visions and dreams and I don't know I believe what's in the Bible I believe the people that share these dreams and visions because these people are most definitely not youtubers that want fame look at their videos most definitely not those people all right y'all I want to start this out with saying I'm not a prophet I do not give myself any kind of title never will I'm just a man who loves the Lord um, <clears throat> But I just woken up from a dream and I said, I'm ready, Lord. And in this time I saw choo, 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 people just shooting up everywhere. <clears throat> and by the time it got to me, I don't know, I, I felt weird. And then I woke up. Window and I saw like souls being, you know, like going up, going up to heaven. It was like almost like a hologram. I was like, um, people were almost like you can see through them from heaven with the shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remaining shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we will always be with the Lord therefore comfort one another with these words so is this event that we call the rapture spoken of elsewhere in scripture yes it is Jesus in John 14 said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again to receive you to myself that where i am you may be also
short. Time is so short. And people are dying every day. And, uh, and we're running out of time. We're running. We've got a time right now, a time window. Has your heart changed? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Is, is, are you living with the, by the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and kindness, and self-control. Are you emanating that? God doesn't. There's no way God touches a person and they don't get transformed. He said, make the tree good and the fruit, fruit will be good. Are you living a life that represents our Lord and Savior? Time's short. God changed me so much. He's changed me so much from what I used to be. We all are sinners. You might think, no, I'm a good person. Especially people, if people tell me, Mary, you're so kind, you're so loving, you're so this and that. Yeah, by the grace of God, I might be a pretty nice person, but that does not save me at all. I still am a way too selfish, proud person, who's lied enough in their life, who probably stole stuff, who had bad thoughts about people, all these details. And even that makes us imperfect toward a holy, perfect, righteous, loving, faultless God who was portrayed in Jesus. I pray to God that all of his children are, are taken, you know what I'm saying? And that everybody that deserves another chance gets their second chance when the tribulation starts. And I hope that y'all take y'all's lives very seriously. Repent for everything y'all do. And y'all be careful, man, out here, because it's a dangerous world. To bow before it, the perfect God and acknowledge our sins, he will open your eyes. Remember, our battle is not against Black Lives Matter. Our battle is not against uh, Police Lives Matter. Our battle is not against lgbtq now a right they're they're trying to put an age fluid to be saying pretty much a grown man can have sex with little boys we knew that was coming all right um our battle's not against them it's the spirits behind all of that um remember in the spirit of uh sodom and gomorrah what was happening is behold this was the iniquity of sodom pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness within her and in her daughters Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. They were arrogant and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Many consider the Bible to be a book filled with myths and tales. If this is you, I encourage you to watch the following with an open mind. A few miles away from the Dead Sea, it is still possible to find today the remains and ruins of the destroyed cities described in Genesis 19. You'll find this kind of sulfur. It's everywhere in the region. Because the Bible said, rain, sulfur, brimstone, fire, upon the whole land. Falling into the hands of, a, of, of God, being angry. We do not want to share in the judgment. We do not want God's wrath and judgment on us. Go and read that book in the Bible, um, and it will speak for itself on how angry God is and how serious his wrath is going to be when it comes on this earth. It's the most, it's like a mixture of fear, um, joy, and just like pure excitement. Um, that's how I can describe it. And, but it was more real than anything I've ever felt in real life. Um, so that's how I know it was a dream from the Lord. Um, so I'm on my knees and then the next thing I know, the sky closes and it's, and it's pitch black again. Um, and so I start running, running home. Um, and as I'm going home, I just see these big orbs of light coming down um, and landing right next to me. And, and it looks like meteorites or, or asteroids that are flying through the sky. Another thing that was weird, I don't think that I've seen this yet, but this happened in my dream. As the fireballs were approaching, because it took a long time in a way, it, it was like slow motion, right? 
it was like this beautiful fireball, the light show before the portals had opened up. And as these fireballs are approaching Earth and everybody's just like, you know, I noticed that the oxygen level all of a sudden was getting depleted. As the fireballs approached closer, the fireballs basically uh, were taking our oxygen level up. I don't know if it's because of the velocity and, and, and how many of them were in the air, but you could hardly breathe in the air, basically. It was, it was really weird. So uh, have a good Monday, August 10, 2020, y'all. Thank you. The dispensation of grace, the church age, is about to end, and God is about to put his full attention back to the nation of Israel for Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period. You are going to go through the worst of the worst of the worst that you've ever went through in your entire life. And you don't want to be here. You want to be under God's love. You do not want to be under his wrath. You do not want to be under his wrath because it's going to be such a terrible time. We are just waiting on the Antichrist to be revealed. Nothing else has to happen for the rapture to happen. I want you to know God is at the door. Behold, I'm at the door. I knock. He who opens, I will come in and sup with him. Remember that scripture? That We don't have much time left here. Um, things aren't going to go back to normal. Um, as everyone wants them to. We, we really, sorry to say it, but we gotta be so prideful and blind to believe, oh, next year I'm gonna do this and everything's gonna be good again. Man, we are in some, some scary times, but also amazing times. If you know the Lord, you're, you're encouraged if you know the Lord. You're, you're looking up every day. Thinking this might be the day of, of my redemption. Jesus came to say it was for the heavenly kingdom where there is ultimate peace because we can never reach it here on this earth as long as we're in this, these fallen, selfish, sinful bodies. And he can redeem us and set us free and put the seal of the Spirit upon us as a promise that we are part of the future kingdom and we are saved. And that's what is meant with being saved, is being saved from God's wrath. We can be part of His, we can be in His presence when we die and when Jesus will eventually come back and really make everything new. We believe in it, heck yeah we do. I want those trumpets blowing. <laughs> there will be no sin, like no sickness, no hunger, no war. It'll, it'll literally be perfect. Well, he is coming back, and I can't wait till that day because trumpets will blow and I will be on my knees ready for Jesus. I think people always kind of have a picture of heaven just like floating around in the clouds and a bunch of angels and everything, but you know, I think heaven is so much more than we can ever imagine it to be because it's literally perfection. It's living without sin, and that's something we can't even grasp, and it's not just going to be some boring place where we're all floating around. Why do Christians believe he's coming back? How do they know? Because it says it in the Bible, the holy word. It's going to be paradise. We want to be so excited for Jesus to come back because then he's going to take all of us believers and take us up to his kingdom. And I think that we should live every day as if Jesus was coming back that day and we knew it because that is such an important way to live with that mindset because we don't know when he's coming back. I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect, and I think that none of us are perfect. It's really hard, and it takes a lot of humility to accept that we're sinners and we're not good people. The all about me generation. The Holy Bible tells us precisely what the state of the world will be like during the last days. One of the top scriptures that I believe re reveals we are living in the final moments before the rapture and the start of the seven year tribulation period is recorded in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. In 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, the Apostle Paul records the following This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. I think it's pretty safe to say that everything that I just went over there in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, is exactly what's occurring right now before our very eyes, more than any other time in human history. Humanity will become materialistic. Men will become lovers of, of themselves. So our generation. This is something where I realize this is like everything spot on 100%. Because if I look back, I mean, people are always kind of selfish and stuff. But looking at our generation, and I'm guilty of that too, how much we present ourselves, how much we just, it's all about ourselves and our social media here and likes and, and just travel and I and I and I. And then I'm like, look at this world. And... I don't want, I want to wake up from that and not be ignorant and have everything be about me. That's just terrible. Christian persecution is on the rise. I just talked to friends and they were like, what? Christians are persecuted? I'm like, yes, Christians are persecuted. Look at North Korea. Look at the um, camps in China where they're really being tortured in disgusting ways. Now that I met Holocaust survivors, I know their story and I shared my story with them. Your God, your Messiah changed my heart giving his life for me so I can have life everlasting. He rescued me, he saved me, he came and brought joy in my life again. And I'm a blessed woman. And I start crying and they start crying and we are able to relate to each other and they embrace me and they love me and they experience some healing, I believe, when they hear my story. That is a privilege to have that in my life. been saying that for years you really think now or somebody else said i think it's arrogance to think jesus is coming back now and i think it's the other way it's ignorance if we don't expect him since everything is coming together so incredibly then in the bible also talks about the fig tree generation um which is kind of con like um concerning that israel became a nation in 1948 and then apparently if you interpret that 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 um chapter it's that Jesus said, this is all gonna happen in one generation. And if you think about 80 years being a generation, like we're at the end of, like from 48, we're at 72. And you know, it's just really coming closer. And um, I really don't wanna make a weird series. I just want to trust scripture and be ready, but, um, 2020 also like people will talk about 2020 vision and how it means rescue and it's really really interesting times we live in <laughs> going to bring you the article in just a second we're going to read over it 
but this rabbi seems very sure that this is the last um, Feast of Trumpets um, that they will have without their Messiah. He is basically saying that the Messiah is coming this year. Now, we know that, that, that their Messiah that they are looking for is, in fact, the Antichrist. They are not looking for Jesus. They are looking for their own Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So they're looking for a different God. <laughs> um, but we watch these things because we know that the restrainer, which is the body of Christ, the church, um, has to be removed before the Antichrist is revealed. Now, this um, rabbi uh, seems to be very sure, like he just knows. Um, and he has explained in this article that he very well understands that he is accountable for the things that he says. Let's go ahead and just read it really quick and then we'll talk about it. There have been 5,780 holidays of Rosh Hashanah since the creation of the world. But if a prominent rabbi's prediction proves true, in just a few short weeks, Rosh Hashanah number 5,781 will be quite special. Rabbi Shalom Arush, an Israel Breslov rabbi and founder of the Chut Shell Chest Institutions, made an entirely uncharacteristic announcement on september 18th jews will be celebrating the last new year without the messiah i am going to tell you with certainty that hashim god literally the name will help us meet together after rosh hashanah rabbi arush said in an interview last week and remember well what i am telling you that this rosh hashanah will be the last one without Mashiach, Messiah. And it could very well be that on this Rosh Hashanah, the Messiah will be revealed. The rabbi emphasized that he has never made such a statement before. Anyone who knows me knows that for over 40 years I am teaching and have I never spoken about Messiah, Rabbi Arush said. But these are things that are clear and everyone sees them. I can't explain, but please don't miss out on this because this year you will receive gifts like never before. Men will fear for the future. I just have to look around for my friends and realize there's so much in them. Anxiety, what, what is my calling or what will I do? Whether they're unbelievers or not, I'm like, guys, Jesus is a bubble that gladly and is the solution to breaking free from being a slave to this world, slave to sin, slave to being deceived and everything like that. There are humble people just being excited for Jesus to come. And if you, if you have doubts of me saying stuff like that, I totally understand. I'm a wretch that was way too self-indulgent proud my whole life. Um, I am a baby in Christ but I, I just want to please God and be obedient to him. I don't care. Like, it's not easy being seen as weird, but it's so much better than being deceived. And I want to encourage you guys, Jesus is the right person to run to for security and for refuge. It doesn't have to look like um, this really structured out relationship. It's just praying. As you go about your day, it's singing, it's meditating on the word. It's, you can be doing all sorts of things while abiding in Christ. It's not 10 minutes, 15 minutes of my Devo time is my abiding in Christ. No, it's literally your lifestyle. The time that we're living in right now is just really important to um, forgive and move on and draw closer to God as much as we can, pray and um there's just so much going on right now it's like it's if you grew up in church or you know god that you know these times are serious that we're living in right now and i just want to encourage someone to um just draw closer to the lord during this season and um just be ready for anything that can happen you know and just be encouraged god bless 
praise the Lord.